That's it. We're live. Um, Whoa. Wicked. This is the first time we're trying this out, uh, which is uh, a, a live recording of syntax. Uh, it's, we're not nearly as polished as we are on the final episode, even if you think that's polished. We have an editor named Adam, and he makes us sound much better than we actually do. Uh, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to to record one of these live uh, just to, I don't know, make some make some new content and see how everything's going. Yeah, try it out. Yeah, I, this is easy. I mean, with the well, it, in theory, it's easy to do, <laughs> do this live stream hangout. Turns out, uh, we found a lot of ways to make it not easy. So, forty-five minutes to get this thing going. Yeah, is uh, that's that's Google YouTube stuff for you. They they change it every every couple of days, and there's so many integrations of everything. Yeah, so, it sucks. Um... <laughs> 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 I'm gonna debug that. I'm bringing back the uh, soundboard just for this. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you can hear that. Let me know if you can hear those soundboards in the chat. I think there's like also a minute uh, from the chat, a minute backup. So um, I'm going to hit record on my end, Scott. Oh yeah, I'm gonna. I gotta do that too. I forgot. Test. Well, that would have sucked. Oh, test. Hey, what's up? Test, 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 test. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a confer- confirmation just to make sure mine's recording the right. Oh, we we always do. I oh, have to do this to make sure we're recording the right mics here. That would be a huge. Okay, I'm in. I'm good. Delete that. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm rolling. Rolling. Um. Let's pull our Trello open. Get our sponsors for today. This is all behind the scenes, everybody. Yeah, this is how we, this is almost exactly how we do it. This is how we always have to figure out who the sponsors are before. Sometimes we record them in sp- in place. Sometimes we record them after the fact. There's a good chance my camera is going to die in the middle of this because uh, I have no idea what the, I'm, I'm like have it plugged in in the battery. So it will default to oh, my okay. crappy camera if this one dies. That's fine. This is going live next week. And that is Fresh Books and Sanity. So, uh, oh, yeah. Hey, we got a flexing with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, flexing with the boys. That's great. Uh, that's hilarious. Can only see Scott. Where are you, Wes? People are saying they can only see Scott. Can everyone only see me? That's, or maybe it switches based on who's talking. Yeah, I might be the only one talking. Let me see. There might be a setting for that where you can see us both or only show who's talking. I don't know what's better or worse. Only Scott, only Scott, only Scott, only Scott. No. Hmm. professionals i don't i have no idea how to i it might be uh a setting on your on your end control room. control room oh control room is that little like yeah i'm not moderated so i can't i can't do it oh it's it's that little like gear thing in the side left where you have all yeah. like the icons it's i have the, that on enable auto load what is that is okay. there something that says like show who is Talking or oh, there's Wes. Oh, I think you know what? I think I have to click back and forth to who. What? There's got to be an auto, man. There's got to be an auto. Yeah. Man, what a what a system! It's 2018. Wait, it just. Oh, now I think it's going back and forth. You cool? Say something. Yes. Hello. 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 What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? And check if it's auto switching. <laughs> Someone asked, "Are these boxes full of stickers?" Yes, there's many, <laughs> many thousands of stickers <laughs> showing up here. Stop laughing! You're, you're taking my <laughs> control. Stop laughing. <laughs> okay, so the auto switch is working. Thank you, everybody. Holy, we got what 211 viewers? Oh, 210. Goodbye to whoever just dropped off. They didn't like it. They didn't. That's, that's all right. Okay. Um, I just got a uh, 
one last little uh, email from uh, Anity. Somebody just tweeted us that flexing with the boys is kind of stupid. <laughs> It is kind of stupid. <laughs> yeah, we know that. Yeah, we're aware of that. We're, we're, we're very aware of that. <laughs> oh, man. That's so funny. Here, hold on. Let's reply. We are well aware of that. I tweeted back. Everyone go fave that tweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we should probably get started. Um, I've got... All of this. Let's let's do the sponsors after, and then we'll just cut them in because there's a little bit I have to read about this. And I want to keep going. Uh, I just want to make sure that we we get that sponsor spot just right. Behind the scenes is what Behind we do. Scenes. Okay, so let's let's do our clap. I'll count down in three, two, one. Oh, for me. I'd be curious to see whenever Scott and I do that, it's like three seconds off, but for some reason it always lines up perfectly. They're always, yeah, it's a, it's a total crap shoot. So that's, that's maybe the funniest part of the show that no one ever gets to see is us trying to clap to start the show. Poor editor. All right, let's uh, kick it off. I'm going to kick the, I'll kick off this one. Cause I think you did the last one. Is that true? Yeah, I did do All that. All right. Welcome to Syntax. My name is Wes Boss, and with me is Scott Talinsky. How are you doing today, Scott? Hey, I'm doing super good. Just hanging out here. We're uh, live streaming this episode yeah. on YouTube for the first time ever just to try it out. So uh, uh, hello to every single person that's watching right now. This is pretty sweet. And if you didn't catch this one, we might do this again in the future. Who knows? Uh, it's a little behind the scenes look into Syntax right now if you're on the YouTube uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm hanging out, man. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm just, uh, I'm ready to kick it off. I'm really excited about this episode in particular, because, uh, as we were doing the notes, I was just like, yeah, this is good stuff. So I'm psyched. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing really, really well. I'm, uh, sitting in my office with the webcam on and everybody's asking about the boxes of stickers that I have behind here. There's yep. nine ma massive boxes of stickers. They are currently being processed to take out a trademark infringing sticker that's all i'll say about that uh so <laughs> let's uh let's jump into it today we're going to do the 11 habits of highly effective developers um i thought this is kind of a, a fun one to do because there's obviously that book which seems super cheesy i think it's like the 10 habits of highly successful people um it seems cheesy but it's actually uh, a fantastic book i really enjoyed it um, and, uh, we thought we would sort of put together 10 habits, but we didn't have 10, we had 11. So we changed the name cause we do what we want over here. Uh, so we're going to go through them and, and kind of riff on, on each of, of them. And, uh, hopefully these are some, uh, tips you can pick up as to how to apply them to your own career. Yeah. Yeah. So we have seven or how many, how many did we land on? I know you just said it, but like 11, is it, is it totally 11 officially 11? Well. Yeah, because we're using an ordered list here. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, this episode is sponsored uh, by uh, it's sponsored by one of our longtime sponsors, which is FreshBooks, which is the easiest way to get your cloud accounting set up. It's seriously an awesome service, and it's also sponsored by Sanity, which is a bring your own front end sort of. API as a service, allowing you to build in structure and content and everything and allowing you to worry about the front end without having to worry about the back end. It's really, really cool. We're going to get into a lot more about both Sanity and FreshBooks later on in this show. It's 38 inches, man. It's 38 inches. <laughs> I opened up the soundboard uh, just for a, a little old time sake on this. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to bring it back for the for the big show, big live stream. Awesome. So let's get into it. First tip we have here, and these are in no particular order; they're just the order in which uh, we thought of them. The first tip we have here is that you understand uh, stakeholder and business goals, and this is something I talk about a lot when we talk about uh, freelancing. But I also think it's important for someone who wants to be a a good developer uh, if you want to. Uh, do really well in your organization. If you want to do really well for the product or the website or the application that you're building, you need to understand like who is this website or web app for at the end of the day, and and what are we trying to accomplish? Because all too often I see people 
um, they get caught up in their own like mama drama about frameworks and, <laughs> and all that stuff. And uh, it, the frameworks and everything matter. Uh, they matter for you as a developer so you can do your job quickly. So you, you don't get too caught up in, uh, in technical debt. That's really, really important, but they, they matter because you want to make sure that your end goal, and generally that's a business that's trying to make money or, 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 or an organization that's trying to uh, get their point across. I've given the example in the past, I worked with a food bank website and the end goal is how do we get people uh, to, to the information to use the, the food bank as well as how do we get people to donate goods and money towards this? So I think that's really important, understanding stakeholder and business goals. Yeah, it's easy to lose track of that, too, especially when you're at the lower rungs of maybe a large company. I worked for uh, at least one agency that had like 2,000, 3,000 employees. And uh, it's really, you know, when you're one of those 2,000, 3,000 employees or even more than that, it's not always easy to to see exactly how everything that you do like lines up to a core goal of this organization. Maybe this organization is huge, right? Uh but it does every every time that you're you're doing anything with your your job, it is for a reason. I mean, they hired you for a reason, so it's it's really important that you you understand what your role is in that business and that you do take ownership of that. I mean, obviously, uh, whether or not you do have ownership over that is uh, sort of dependent on uh, how the company views you as an employee, right? Like that could be used ex- expendable, and maybe it's not easy to feel that way. Maybe you you know you're purposefully not feeling that way, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, everything you do is you're there because you were hired to do it. Awesome. You got to grab the next one. Yeah, I'll grab the next one. Yeah. Number two here is that you are curious and always learning. Now, this is uh, one that we talk about all the time on this show. Uh, and this is sort of student mentality and always wanting to learn and always being curious about that next thing, uh, because that's what drives us forward. When you lose your curiosity, you lose a little bit of that spark. And when you lose that spark, you sort of lose uh, that drive to improve. You lose the uh, care that you put into your work. You sort of lose any of that stuff that is really what makes you a good developer at the end of the day. So if you want to continue to grow, you want to continue to learn, you want to continue to be effective as a developer, you kind of always have to be curious and excited about what's new, what's in the future, what you can be doing. Maybe and maybe it's not something that's new like tech-wise, like maybe not something that just came out, but maybe something that's new to you. Maybe you've never done this technique or this technique, or maybe you wanted to clean up your code or do this or a little bit of that. Uh, but at the end of the day, like you have to be curious, you have to be excited about what you're doing and grow that so that you can be good at what you do. Yeah, I think curious is the the best way to describe uh, this approach to learning because you can certainly overdo it. And there's certainly a lot of people who are feeling overwhelmed with all of the different things that are always changing and, and feeling like they need to learn absolutely everything. We've talked about that in depth on this podcast. Uh, just finding like, huh, I wonder if I could approach this a better way. Or, oh, someone has uh, proposed a new technology or a new solution to this. I'm going to take a look at that and always just kind of having an open mind to, to whatever it is. And, uh, and, and always having like a, some sort of project that you're working on, whether it's a side project or, or something of your own, uh, that will, will keep you sharp. Cause, uh, we, we all know that in your day job, it, you could run into a, you run into these things where you're just working with the same tech for three or four years. Cause that's the stack that you're on. And, um, that gap between what is relevant and, and what is is new and what you're working on can sometimes get a little bit too big. Yeah, I mean that's one of those things that uh, I can't I can't count the amount of times when I was working at agencies where my my hobby projects and like my extra time stuff was the things that were were keeping me excited about what I was doing. It wasn't the WordPress site that I had made for the hundredth time. It was uh, you know the Angular app that I was hacking together for fun. Next one we got here is you have an open mind about new technologies. This is kind of a nice one to to go into after the last one. Um, So all too often, myself included, something new comes out and you say, "Uh, that's dumb. Why would you do it that way? And the famous example is when React came out, everybody said that it was dumb because you put your your JavaScript in line, like in the same file as your, 
your your templates and and we didn't even know about css and js at that time and everyone's like that's dumb you have separation of concern and we were all really happy uh, about how we were building applications at the time um, but react came out and just challenged all of those norms um, because they have an, an open mind to new technology and i think some of the best new technologies that have come out um, are from people who are just questioning maybe there is a better way maybe these best practices that we're all spouting off is maybe not the best way to approach it. Yeah. Could you imagine if React would have launched with uh, JS in components as part of React or something? Oh. Like, I think there would have been actual rise. I think that's the first time you would have seen developers <laughs> taking to the streets because people would have been so concerned. But I, I mean, I agree. I, I wrote a little note in here. It's like odd foods, like sometimes, or maybe not even necessarily like odd foods, but foods you haven't tried or maybe just like aren't accustomed to. Like, this is going to sound really stupid, but it wasn't until uh, it was like, uh like after party situation at like a, in a college party and i was pretty uh um you know i, I had a few in me at this point <laughs> and uh, uh somebody had laid down hummus on the table and i was like i don't ever had hummus and people were like what so then i went to town on this hummus and it was like the greatest thing because i had never had it right and at before it wasn't it's not like it's an unusual food i just never had it and then at that point it was game changing to me i was like man I'll, i just really want some hummus now from from now on so best food to have after drinking it is totally yeah. what we, after the bar when i went to school in toronto uh we would have like a lebanese shawarma everywhere and you would just after the bar you just get this massive shawarma that just dripped down your hand and <laughs> the best thing ever <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See, exactly. You, you never know when the uh, technology that you choose that looked scary to you in the past is going to be the hummus of your future. So, um, <laughs> so that's deep, deep. Uh, what, are we, what are we right now? About 15 minutes. Should we should we take a quick break for the first sponsor? I think we should wait a little bit more. You should go to like. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's wait for the next one or one or two more questions. We'll, we'll play it by ear. See how we're doing. All right, next one. You want to grab the next one? Yes, the next one is this one's can be scary for a lot of people. Um, and that's you you are comfortable asking for help. Uh, that's not just like help from your coworkers, but it's help in an IRC chat room, it's help in a um, you know, a Slack room, it's help in a classroom. Maybe you're in a boot camp and you don't understand something, and maybe it seems like every single other person in the class or in the world for that matter understands the topic. Like I don't know, for a long time, Redux was just, it seemed like everyone had sort of understood Redux out of the box, but there was like a large amount of people who looked at Redux and were like, oh, wait, I don't know what, I don't know what any of this means. Um, and, and it was hard for people sometimes to look at that and admit that I, I don't, I don't get this right. Uh, when everyone else seems to understand this. So, uh, being comfortable asking questions in a, any sort of setting in a group setting in a digital setting, uh, any sort of way is such a, a huge skill. It's like a, a practicable skill you need to do. Um, it, it's just immensely, um, I don't know, just immensely important to growing as a developer. Yeah, or anything for people to, to check your ego at the door and simply just ask for help. Hey, I don't know how how any of this works. And I think that's particularly hard in our industry because of the flip side of that is often when you do ask for help, people come out of it feeling like, I'm not sure I'm glad I asked for help because you can get talked down to. And there's like, maybe if you are, that's our next one is you help others. But uh, there, there is a right way and a wrong way to approach someone that that is asking for help and, and maybe not necessarily even asking for help. But um, I don't know, being being able to be vulnerable and and being able to let others know that you don't have all the answers. No one has all the answers. And there's there's way more people out there that are especially when you get into like a new area, maybe you are um having trouble with like nginx your server configure is wrong like that's a perfect time to reach out to someone who does this stuff day in and day out or somebody is like we got a an email after the domain name episode um we got a domain name from someone who uh i'm not sure if i'm allowed to say this or not but <laughs> it, someone who runs the dns for a large fruit company and uh like so like you must was it Apple? Was Apple the company? Could um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Blackberry. Um, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> anyways, uh, I was just like, so like, wow. Like, now I have this person in my email that if I 
ever have a problem with DNS and not understanding how these things work. Like we were talking about how propagation sometimes takes long and and he explained how you can like never have to wait for propagation if you if you attack it in a specific way. I should go back to the email and, and mention it because it was super helpful information. So uh, I think that that's really cool to be able to reach out to experts, stand on the shoulders of giants, as we say. Yeah, that, I mean, again, it's just it is it's making yourself vulnerable. And uh, if you have ever asked a question and felt like it wasn't well received that you were asking a question, then it's really easy to feel down and and like retreat into that that shell and maybe not ask again. But it is it's incredibly important. And um, if your coworkers, your boss, your teacher are good, they're going to accept any question, uh, basically, no matter what it is and and help you through that. And uh, another, I mean, um, some of the cool things here is that, like, if you use a service like uh, FreshBooks, if you do need to ask for help, they're incredible at getting you that help. Uh, Because FreshBook, one of our sponsors today, is Uh, just so good at their customer service. And Wes, you know firsthand, we've talked about it before, uh, about FreshBooks customer service. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about FreshBooks overall? So I think, like, the FreshBooks, the company, has an like a really awesome approach to dealing with customer service, and I I don't know if this is still the 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 rule, but I think it is. Is that everybody on the product, everyone that works at the company, has to spend I think like two weeks, I don't know how however often, two weeks a year, let's just say, um, working in support. Um, and I called them once because I was having a problem with uh, HST being like. I, I had inputted HST like lowercase, but also I had um, HST as the taxes in Canada and Ontario. Um, so I had put it in lowercase and uppercase, and like those were registering as separate taxes. Um, so I called them, and uh, they they clearly knew what was a problem. And uh, I think I talked to one of the developers on the phone. Like they pick up the phone, no problem. Support was really good. They say no problem. Give me like twenty minutes. We're gonna write a script that's gonna convert your data all over to one and. I think within 10, 15 minutes, I got an email back from them and it was all taken care of. So uh, their support is amazing. I, I very rarely actually contact support, but when I do, it's when I'm incredibly frustrated with something and having someone help you out so quickly just makes me feel like, oh, finally, like I know I'm not going to be uh, in the middle of the night. Taxes are due the next day and something's going to go wrong. And in, in, pro- in this case, it was my problem, the way I inputted the data, uh, but they they still can help me out. So check them out at freshbooks.com forward slash syntax for a 30 day unrestricted free trial. Make sure you use syntax in the how did you hear about us section. Yeah, you know, I had had like a also like a service issue too, when I was like trying to export data out of my uh, bookkeeping software. And I emailed them and was like, how do I import this? And they're like, Oh, there is no way to do that. But we'll just do it. We'll, We'll fix it up for you. So uh, and they're they're pretty amazing, uh, I have to say. In in my small experience with FreshBooks support staff, awesome stuff. So, really yeah. Stuff. So along that same lines, um, is you know asking for help is that you help others. And there's I, I want to be kind of clear about this because there's a difference between like being the know it all. That's like you're doing this wrong. Like that's wrong. That that's wrong. That's wrong. And the person who's like offering help. Uh, in all sorts of like constructive ways, because uh, offering offering help to your fellow co- coworkers or doing like trainings or lunch and learn sort of stuff where you're getting to share your knowledge is extremely important, especially in a uh, non intimidating way where people can uh, ask you questions or they can, you know, just dive in a little bit more to your code, especially if it's something they want to learn. Uh, but again, it's not going to be a situation where you're looking over their shoulders and being like, oh, hey. By the way, that's wrong, you know? Yeah, I think helping others. I I think I started teaching in person seven, eight years ago. It's a long time ago. And um, I noticed that as soon as I started to help others through their problems and and to teach other people, uh, my own skill level became so much higher because... Uh, I don't know. There's just something about explaining topics to other people and and helping people out and and tackling issues that uh, it makes your own skill level so much higher. And I, I think it also um, it, it obviously really helped me in uh, creating all my video content as well because uh, it allows me to just uh, 
anticipate what what the needs are and and all that stuff with it. So, uh, however you help people, whether that's uh, answering questions for people, whether that's uh, doing something very publicly like blogging or YouTube videos, or uh, just something smaller like mentoring. I know there's a lot of people who do just one on one mentoring, and you're not going to get a whole lot of claps for something like that. But that to that one person who you are mentoring and and helping them transition into this industry, it probably means the world for them. So. Um, however it is that you feel most com comfortable helping other people, um, whatever it is, it's, I highly recommend that you, you find a way to do that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you, you mentioned some things like, um, like YouTubing and blogging and stuff like that. And even like answering stack overflow questions that you can be sometimes stack overflow turns into like a competition. It's like, who can get to this one the first, but the, yeah. at the end of the day, like the goal is to be helpful to people. So uh, you, you want to make sure that whatever you're doing is providing help where people need it. Not like, uh, just trying to appear smart. I think that's a, that's a big thing I want to, I want to get across. Yeah. Cause that's, that's another thing I see all the time in, um, volunteering for like, I used to volunteer for ladies learning code. Um, for I used to teach at a boot camp called Hacker You, and uh, you would you would find that there were some people that would help that they were really excited about helping, but they're just a little bit overbearing. Um, and it was like we had this like ask for help thing, and then people would um, like send like private Slack questions to me and be like, "Hey, like, can you help me? Like, I don't want to put myself out there because I don't mm -hmm. want X, Y, and Z to come uh, help me out because." They're a little bit overbearing, and and then they just like get they get flustered and and whatnot. So, uh, I think the way to get around that is just to keep helping more and more people. Go volunteer for some weekend thing. There's tons and tons of kids learning code or ladies learning code or uh, lots of refugee boot camps. There's so many amazing uh, things out there that need someone to give up one Saturday every six months uh, to volunteer for this kind of thing. People in the chat room are all saying that they are. Uh, help helping out in boot camps. I think it's such a valuable skill to have. Yeah, absolutely. All right, what you got the next one? Next one is you have a problem solver mentality. So uh, this is a good one because software is you're solving problems with software. So someone comes to you with a, a real world problem and says, how can we make this faster, better, stronger, whatever it is? How do we automate this task? How do we help our customers who are frustrated at this problem with technology? That's what technology does, right? So there's that piece. But then there's also the piece of like writing software causes lots of bugs and causes lots of issues. And you have to be able to, um, to debug it and, and figure it out. So uh, if you are someone who gets easily frustrated at, um, at problems in, in whatever or, or being able to, to blame things really quickly on that's stupid. The way that this works is dumb uh, and whatnot. Uh, it's it's not that you can't be a good developer, but being able to work on your problem solver mentality, I think, is is really important. And being able to um, break things down into testable components, being able to pinpoint an issue. Sometimes, like I see this all the time in uh, in the real world. I I told the story a couple of podcasts ago how my daughter was in the hospital. And the lady with the the testing computer couldn't was wiggling the monitor cord when the computer was dead, right? Like mm -hmm. there's just lots of times in the real world, regardless of if it's computers or not, that people just see, oh, it's broken. I don't know where to start. Like, what could it possibly be? Whereas, like, for me, like, I'll give you another stupid example. We were at a rented a cottage and the hose wasn't working. And uh I forget who it was, tried to use the hose, and they're like, oh, it doesn't work. And then I'm just like, okay, does okay. First, is it the is it the actual hose thing? No. Is the hose getting water? No. Is the if I if you turn this on the other way, is that going to pull water? No. So you just kind of keep tracing it back until eventually you found a little knob that you had to turn on, and that pushed the water right through the hose. Right. It's just kind of like be able to follow the trail of of problems until it is that you can find out where the problem is, and then fixing it is is a whole nother problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, isolating the problem and following that trail and like uh, those are all such huge, huge skills in this. I mean, because uh, especially where you're working with code, knowing where to look and knowing what to remove, like you start pulling away things that don't matter. 
until you just narrow down exactly like what is the singular item that is causing the problem. And then you can dive into that item and figure out why that item is not working. A lot of people don't know this, but before I was a dev, I worked at a, a the University of Michigan and I was doing uh, AV work essentially, but I worked at the hospital. Oh, yeah. And what I was doing at the hospital was uh, someone, I was running lectures for doctors and there's nobody more technically illiterate than doctors. For some reason, the doctors would be like, I have this USB key and there's this USB port, but I don't know what to do with it. Should I put it in the port? I don't know how to, I don't know how this works. And I'd have to be like, okay, you just put it in the port. Now it works. Okay, there you go. Congratulations. But uh, so like that was my job most of the time was troubleshooting things. And now this is a huge one because it's under pressure, right? You have a lecture full of doctors whose times are like, their time is so important and special because, you know, all the stuff they have to learn and do and whatever, they're constantly running back and forth. So when they're sitting there and some AV tech isn't working at this lecture hall, like you have to get this done, uh, you know, with all of these stares on you. So that was like such a masterclass for me and like being cool under pressure when everything is working or not working. And you know that you can probably solve this problem in any sort of situation or normal situation. But it's the same thing in web dev when the server is on fire and you have marketing and, you know, your PMs like screaming at you because of some, you know, bug. It, yeah. It's important to keep it cool because your brain is not going to function well when you're not keeping it cool. So uh, I think that's such a huge thing. And this is an interview question I get asked a ton uh, is like, what are some situations where you've been under a high amount of stress and had to troubleshoot a problem? Now, luckily, I've had a lot of experience doing that, but it's a huge thing. And you want to think about situations in life where you've had that and when it would have helped to just like remain calm rather than uh, actually freak out about it. Do you, all these stories remind me of uh, when I was in school, uh, you remember they rolled in the like VCR DVD and the TV strapped on that thing. Did you have you one of those? You, yeah, you, you done that, yeah. So stoked that, oh, we're watching a movie. Um, but it was always like the only debugging that the teachers had when the movie didn't work was is it on channel three? That was like the only thing. <laughs> remember we had to put it on channel three to get the VCR to work. Oh yeah. And I would always have to come in there and like be like, okay, if it's is it analog and VCR, if it's a DVD, you're, you you got to work on the inputs. And uh, it's so frustrating to see that that kind of thing where people just don't know how to how to debug that kind of thing. You could make an entire career out of being able to set the TV at channel three. It's like <laughs> you you can do it. People will, will hail you as a tech wizard. I, I know like I was the tech wizard in my family because I knew to turn off the computer and turn it back on again, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. All right. What do we got next here? Um, I guess it's your turn to grab one. Yeah. Next one is you have fun with what you do. And uh, this is a huge one for me because I love, I mean, I love web development. It's the reason why I do all of this extra content. It's the reason why uh, we, you know, work so hard at what we do and, and, and grow and everything like that. For me, the fact that I'm having fun solving these problems, learning this new stuff, creating things is maybe one of the number one drivers to why I'm always pushing for new stuff or pushing to learn or, or, or pushing myself and to do good work is really just because, hey, I enjoy it. And uh, it, it makes us it makes us feel it makes me feel like accomplished when you are able to solve these problems. It makes you feel like really uh, proud and all this stuff when you're able to come up with a really cool, creative solution to something. But at the end of the day, I just have fun. Sometimes uh, we mentioned this a couple episodes back, but like sometimes on like a, a Saturday or a Sunday night when I'm trying to wind down, I'll, I'll play video games or I'll, I'll go break dancing or something. Right. I'll, I'll do my things to, to wind down. But in addition to that, sometimes working on hobby projects, even though you're you're struggling through some code or whatever like that, sometimes coding up some hobby project is relaxing to me because it's genuinely fun. It's it's like I don't feel like I'm working. I feel like I'm I'm solving a creative problem or doing something interesting or whatever. I'm I'm getting that same experience that I would be from playing a video game or something like that. I, I'm I'm you know genuinely enjoying it. Absolutely, I, I think that's also a huge driver behind my courses because web development can be really, really frustrating with all of the bumps and things that you run into. Um, but it's important to, even if 
like what you're working on is not necessarily fun. Like I would say like most of my dev, I'm not like, woohoo, this is so much fun. But it's mm -hmm. those like little, those little things are like, oh man, my database queries are 50% faster. How fun is that? You know, or like, <laughs> or uh, like, oh man, this new thing came to CSS and I took my lunch to, to figure out how to build a, a little cool thing. I was, I was looking the other day, there used to be this um, easing, CSS, there was a proposal for this CSS easing. You know, you have ease in, ease out, and, and Bezier and everything like that. There was like a proposal for like a spring in Safari, and uh, they took it out. And I, I had coded that up like two years ago when they, they proposed it. And it was so much fun. And I, I brought it out of storage the other day, and it, it, they took it out. And I was so bummed. But I was like, oh, it is really fun, like building these little little examples and stuff to, to make sure you enjoy it. And that, that's one of those things that I don't necessarily know. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think you can learn to have fun with this stuff? Or do you think that's more of like a, a personality trait? It's a little bit of both. Sometimes you have to inject some fun into things that aren't fun because not everything is going to be fun. Uh, like, for instance, I made an easing library for myself and like easing. I mean, is easing fun? I don't know. It's fun if you like messing around with uh, Bezier curves and stuff like that. But to make it fun, I made it an easy E uh, NWA themed easing library, and that made it fun for me. So, I mean, personally, I like to make things fun that aren't fun. And it, even if it's stupid, it will add a little bit of like extra uh, oomph into whatever you're doing. All right. What do we got next? Um, you understand work life balance. Um, so, I really like this one because I think that a competitive advantage in our industry is being able to have some sort of work-life balance or some some sort of balance where you do not get burned out. And for every single person, that's going to look a little bit different. I don't want to be the guy that keeps preaching uh, only work however many hours a day. There's different times in my life when I've worked very, very long days and enjoyed it very much. And um, now and I'm at a point in my life where I really only work 9 to 5. This morning, I started at 10 because... Uh, my daughter was up all night and my wife needed to sleep because she was up all night with her. So I started a little bit later. And I think like um, being able to understand that you should have hobbies and exercise and uh, all of these other things outside of coding, um, I think that's really important because of, of the amount of burnout that comes with uh, such a fast-paced industry. Yeah, it's a big thing. And it, it's funny because this goes immediately back to Monday. I mean, you had tweeted out that we didn't know it was Labor Day. And I personally, uh, one, of, one of my 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 bosses and mentors through uh, development my entire career, uh, it was like Halloween or something. And he was just like, I was like, oh, he said something about today being like a, a fun day or something. And I was just like, what are you talking about, man? He's like, are you serious? You don't know that today is Halloween? Like, do you, do you just not? And I don't know any holidays. I just flat out don't remember. I, I'm so awful at that. But uh, it wasn't <laughs> until we had that conversation that I was like, huh, it is a holiday. And you know what? Everyone else is not working. And I'm sitting here working on my desk. And I was uh, I was grinding through some stuff and I, I just sort of it was like noon or something. I just stopped and I was like, you know what? I'm taking the day off uh, because everyone else is taking the day off and I deserve it for all the hard work that I've been doing. So I went on, uh, spent some time in the yard doing adult stuff. I like messaged uh, <laughs> uh, Eric, who's the dev on the site. And I was just like, hey, man, I'm going to go do some yard work. And he's like, oh, wow, you, you're <laughs> living the dad life right now. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mow the lawn. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to pick up some leaves. I'm, uh, I'm going to dad it up. So. I, I took my my Labor Day off to do some uh, do some you know work that way and it's important to do that stuff. It's hard to do that stuff, especially when you you work so hard and you really like love what you do. It's sometimes yeah. really hard, but it's important to to understand the need uh, to do any of that stuff to take the time off. It's all about balance. It's like totally. the balance and between a front end and a back end of a website. And one of our sponsors today is takes care of the back end of the website for you. And that sponsor is Sanity. They're going to remove any sort of uh, insanity that you have in your balance of things uh, by making the whole, I don't know, the whole content side of your application just so, so easy. Uh, so with more about Sanity is Wes. Yes. So sanity.io is, uh, they call it structured content done right. We actually talked about sanity on our design episode and we use their website as a 
a beautifully designed website. So just check it out if you just want to look at a, a really well done website. I really like the font on it. But what does it do? Um, so they are sort of like the CMS backend uh, to your uh, website. So they the best way to explain what it did is they actually went ahead and uh, and created a backend uh, for the syntax website. So what what they did is they you you log up log into sanity.io and you can create a project and then you start to create your data types with all of the different fields that you want. So uh, we had episodes and we had sponsors and we have uh, uh, what people that Scott and I we were like we're hosts are a content type and uh, you can link the content types together um, and then every single content type will have its own uh, input. Which is really really cool because uh, you, obviously you get your input type of text and number and and whatever, but then you can do custom inputs as much as you want because it allows you to um, input uh, React components that are your own custom inputs, which I thought was super super cool. Uh, so if you are looking to build uh, a website that you want to build the backend for it, it's sort of like a CMS that someone can just log in and, and manage all of the content. Uh, inside of there, you want to check out Sanity. A um, couple of other things. Uh, last time we said that uh, what they use is G R O Q Groke. Let's see if we're we're saying that right. Uh, let me just open up the GitHub real quick. Adam, you can cut this out. Hey, everyone in the chat just got to witness the uh, the Adam. first time that we said Adam cut this out. <laughs> the last episode we recorded this uh, this morning, we we're like Adam, Adam, cut this out. Adam, sorry, cut this out. <laughs> so. <laughs> this has actually been pretty smooth. Yeah. So last time we said uh, this Grok graph oriented query language. That's the language that you write to actually ping their servers and pull back a list of uh, a list of all the data that you want. So you can do all of your filtering and sorting and everything in that. Um, we said that that was built upon GraphQL, um, which is he said it's not actually. So that wasn't true. But they're shipping a GraphQL API built on top of that later this fall. So that's really cool, knowing that um, you'll be soon be able to build all your applications in just GraphQL and pull all that data. Um, the API is real time, which means you can sit uh, and edit the same documents in the studio at the same time. That's really cool, kind of like the Google Docs or Dropbox paper. Um, they have an awesome image pipeline. Uh, there's a link to a CSS Tricks article all about that, uh, which is cool. It'll handle all of your image. Uh, image assets, um, and then there's a. They also support microservices as as well. So, uh, if you are building just a, a like a, a real project, or if you just want to try something out and you need a quick backend, because I know a lot of times people want to just build something in React or Vue really quickly, and you can't be bothered to to do the backend part of it. Check out sanity.io forward slash syntax and use the coupon code syntax. Which is going to get you the awesome supercharged plan, which is uh, has some beef, beefed up API quotas. So it's more than just the the free plan quota that you get. So thanks so much to Sanity for sponsoring. Thank you. Yeah, I was really impressed with Sanity's like flexibility and customization. I mean, just the little demo they put together for us was just like really super slick. Yeah, big fan of their everything they're doing, their design, the tools that they have. So. Pretty nifty. Pretty nifty. We're gonna have a dog bark here, so uh, I don't know. There's they're like doing a trash dump outside, and my dogs <laughs> flip out. So uh, we might need to uh, ad lib for a little bit while Adam cuts this out. This might be a YouTube That's fine. special. This is YouTube special. You can you can cut this out. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, it's she's going nuts. Oh, I can, you can I go can grab her, her if cam. you want. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll put her on cam. Everyone can see Lucy, who's a uh, ridiculous. No. Oh. No. Oh. What's up, everybody? I'm going to go get a fake LaCroix. Who's had this bubbly before? It's like Pepsi's answer to LaCroix. So good. Say hi. Say hi, Lucy. Say hi. Say hi. Say hello. I know the mean old trash can's barking. Yeah, I know. I know. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. The trash can's not going to hurt you.
<laughs> Someone says that is fake. Oh yeah, she's not fake. Uh, she's a for anyone who's watching. She's a Hungarian puli, like a Hungarian sheep herding dog. Uh, she's hilarious, but she is she's very protective, so she barks all the time. <laughs> she likes to keep us safe. <laughs> okay, so now that uh, the excitement is gone, uh, was it my turn or your turn? Uh, and- I think your turn. Somebody asks, uh, Ryan asks if she herds us. She does. If you run in a straight line, she tries to cut you off and like angle you in a direction. So uh, she does herd us. Yes. You said it's my turn? Yeah, I'm just reading the comments on Bubbly. I went and got um, a Bubbly. Yeah. Ooh. When they have like a, I got like a 24 pack of mixed from Costco for like, Seven bucks or six bucks? Yeah, dude. Which is way cheaper than than LaCroix is in Canada. That's what we get here. And uh, the 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 Costco in Colorado, uh, I don't know if it, the, the one in Michigan only had like lime, lemon, and grapefruit. The one in Colorado has like passion fruit and all the, the, the more interesting ones, which, uh, yeah, you can get a little bit more variety. Uh, so there you go. A, a bubbly or LaCroix? Oh, LaCroix. We buy, like when we go to Costco, we buy like several of the large ones several of the oh cases man of the i wish you could get that and they're we get so like cheap a case of eight you know like the little box mm-hmm. it's not enough, like man. nine or ten bucks or something like that it's just not it's too expensive not enough so pepsi's coming in and eating their lunch in canada because everyone loves it yeah yeah i can see why you trying we have we have one of Lacroix one a day limits over here because otherwise we're just plowing through them so oh really i yeah. drink like probably like four a day like look at this oh yeah oh yeah uh, courtney courtney will be like i've already had i've already had two today i can't i'm just like, okay <laughs> okay all right do wait whose turn was it i've already forgot Sorry. uh we talked about understand i did work-life balance so okay. you do empathize all right adam we're starting back up cut it in all right okay uh, next up here i believe this is number nine uh, number nine, feeling fine. It's you are empathetic to your coworkers and users. And this is a big one because empathy, a lot of the times, is one of those skills that I think just gets lost in the shuffle of things. Or maybe people think if I'm a good enough dev, then I don't have to treat people well or I don't have to put myself in other people's shoes and stuff like that. Uh, but really, empathy in general and understanding and being a good employee and a good coworker to your fellow workers is just such a, a, an important skill to have nourish, grow, all that good stuff. Because uh, at the end of the day, you want the people you're working with to be their best. You want everyone to be on their best, uh, to do their best work, to feel comfortable, and to feel inspired. And people aren't going to do that if you are, um, y- you know, you're you're not um, treating your coworkers well. Uh, you're not understanding their problems. You're not understanding maybe how they learn and you're not treating uh, people with respect. So uh, being empathetic, treating your coworkers nicely, being a good employee, it's just it's 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 a totally undervalued skill. And I can't tell you how many devs I've worked with that just made me want to quit a job because they were so uh, not not good to work with. They just flat out weren't good to work with, you know, and, and you can always do your best. But um, sometimes people are just. They, they get stuck in their way. So uh, make sure that you're growing and you're you're learning how to be a good person to your fellow coworkers. Yeah, I on the flip side, I've worked with some amazing people who are often will take as much time as is needed in order to explain something to you um, where it's it's clearly my fault because I can't understand something or I'm not sure how like if you're getting kind of skilled up on an existing project, you need to understand kind of how it works. Uh, it's really frustrating to uh, feel like you're in a spot and and you're it's it's it sucks to feel like you're bothering someone when you really need some help. So mm-hmm. uh, when you have empathy for your coworkers as well as as your users, you need to understand. Like go back to the accessibility show we did last week and just thinking about everybody that's involved in a project from the people that are working on it, the designers that you're working on, you're working with, as well as the people that are using the product. Yeah, it's big. It's funny. I mean, even like understanding uh, like how to treat people in a work environment, like in regards to this, like I had this boss one time that was he he was he was a fine boss, like in terms of like managing people. Uh, But he used to come around and we were in a desk cluster with a bunch of other departments and he would come around and make 
seriously the most inappropriate jokes like not like not like pushing the line inappropriate but like like it would it would be inappropriate in most situations but especially in a quiet work environment and and you were either put in that position where like okay you he's your boss so do you laugh at his joke or do you act like very uncomfortable and be like this is this is weird but i remember even like he would leave and like other coworkers from other departments would look over and be like yikes like what is that about uh and so i mean you don't want to put your your uh your coworkers in that position you don't want to make them feel uncomfortable so uh yeah just being able to have that a brain to see like what is the situation like with my coworkers and and how are people feeling is is a big deal. Absolutely. Um, next one we have is you have attention to detail. Uh, I think this one's super important because there's nothing more frustrating uh, when working with other developers or or yourself where you finish something and then the client comes back to you or you have to go back to the your coworker and say like good but here's a list of 40 things that are, are just not right. And this office often happens when you're implementing a design into HTML and CSS, but, but also thinking about all the possible edge case and use cases. So um, I'm working with a, a guy on my own course platform right now. And when we're making decisions, you can tell that he thinks about every little possible thing that could happen in terms of like how to best store data. So the queries are quick or how to not break something if we're introducing a new way of approaching something. Um, and it's it's really cool to see that because um, it's clear that he has very good attention to detail and you don't have to worry about uh, about things breaking because you know that they've thought it through. Yeah, it's big. It's big. And I mean, it could be even like, if you think about it, it could be we talked in um, the design episode about like pixel perfect design and like some people uh, are finishing a design and being like, all right, it's done. And you're like, no, this isn't even close. Like being able to look at things and realize uh, what exactly it needs to be um, through again, uh, the, all those little details is a very important thing. And, you know, sometimes those little details are even like uh, code style or, you know, your, you know, how you're, how you're, doing certain techniques or whatever like that but it, it is a, it's an important thing um to uh to uh just i don't know to to pay attention to all the little things and in our industry what we're doing there's so many little things to keep track of it it's it's nuts but it's it's one of those things you got to practice you got to do you got to do you got to do um and lastly we have here number 11 uh I don't know. Is there such thing as lucky number eleven, or is that a thing? No, I don't think so. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not good with sayings. But uh, number eleven here is that <laughs> you are part of the community, and this could be any sort of like any sort of web development community or design community, online system, or or even local community or work community. Either way, just being a part of a group of other developers is a big, big thing. Because I mean, I can't tell, like how many times has like the most uh, biggest breakthroughs I've had was when I was either not at a meetup or a conference or hanging out, chatting with some friends about some code stuff. It is such a big deal to talk to other human beings about what you're doing because everyone's brain just functions a little bit differently. And it's extremely important to be able to uh, tap into someone else's brain power, use their brain power with your brain power and have some melding of skills and abilities. Yeah, totally. And and that being part of a community can manifest itself in any number of ways. So we've got some examples here. We've local meetups uh, are, are a really good way to to meet them. Even if you go to one every six months or so, uh, lunch and learns. We see often see uh, teams of developers take one of my courses and they'll just do it together on a lunch or they'll do like uh, I've also seen people like rent out a, a conference room on a Saturday and and meet up with. 10 of their friends, and they all go through a JavaScript 30 course, a CSS grid course together. Um, and uh, if, if you don't have that around you, there's um, Twitter. I've, I see this hashtag 100 days of code all the time um, show up on Twitter, and people are doing 100 days of code. And <laughs> that, I think it's so cool because um, by putting yourself out there and saying what you did every single day for 100 days, it's just has this enormous community around it and you see such encouragement you see people starting to like find their community around them because like that's how when i initially started twitter 
I found the web developer community that was surrounding me. And that's how I actually got some of the first jobs that I, I ever did. Uh, so I think it's really important to find your community, whether that's online, whether that's in person, whether that's going to one conference a year, uh, whether that's hanging out on chat rooms or in uh, in the YouTube chat right now, we've got 200 people chatting away. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 huge uh, because the, the level I mean, we have a, a Slack room with level up uh, tutorials and I I bounce ideas. People bounce ideas. Everyone's talking. Everyone's sort of growing together. And it's it's big. I mean, uh, just being part of these things is it's going to help you grow as a human being and help you grow as a person. Um, so, yeah, uh, be part of a community. Let's do it. Awesome. So that's our 11 tips. If you have any more tips, um, why don't you send them on over to at Syntax FM? Um, we have this idea since we're, we're live streaming. Not sure if we'll keep this in the final one or not. Uh, but why don't we have some uh, YouTube chat AMAs? Should we do our, our sick picks and tasty treats and all that first? Yeah, or well, you, we... you okay. take it off. All right, we'll do our sick picks and shameless plugs first, and then uh, we'll have an AMA. So when we ask for questions in a couple of minutes, make sure you pop them in the chat room. Uh, so sick pick, I'm actually going to pick a book. I was just on vacation, and part of that vacation was um, my wife's mom came around, or my mother-in-law came with us, and and it, she took care of our kids for a couple of the mornings, and we had that time to just do whatever it is we wanted. So um, my wife and I both did professional development, and um, I read a couple books on uh, money management and investing, and just kind of uh, idea. I've always, I haven't ever talked much about my like um, thought process behind like saving money and. Uh, buying cars with cash rather than financing them, and, and I have all these like thoughts about how to how to best manage money, and it's probably not important. But um, I did find that this book that I read uh, very much aligned with my thoughts on on how to manage money and and how to approach money and 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 its its role it plays in your life. Um, and I had been avoiding this book for years because it sounds so stupid. It's called. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, yeah. Wait, yes. I have, have you, I'm familiar. Yeah. Have you read it? I have. Or just yeah. heard of it? Yeah. I so I I just... Then, it's like a 23-year-old book or something like that, or, or a 15-year-old book. It's really old, but um, all of the concepts in it really stand the test of time. I'm a big fan of it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of bummed that I left it for so long because it was such a cheesy uh, title, but I highly recommend it. I, I grabbed it on audiobook. I think I flipped it on 1.5x and I was through it in about five hours of just laying in the hammock and listening to it. Yeah, that's it, it's, a, it's a good book. It's I mean, again, it's one of those ones you want to listen to with some like context of of how it fits into your life, because sometimes yeah. it's the, especially like there were there were some of those like some of these finance books, they like really say like this is the way it's this way or no other way. And it's great to like get a very amount of opinions on different stuff. And then I like mix them all together in my mind. So I, I love any of those books. I love listening to that sort of stuff. I have a bunch of like podcasts in that regard I listen to. Uh, but yeah, Rich Dad Poor Dad is a classic for a reason. Uh, it's definitely yeah. one that you want to check out. It was I, I really liked it because it it I I'm like my my kids are starting to grow up and I'm starting to have to talk to them about money. Like my daughter found five bucks on the ground the other day and I was like, oh man, like like we got to what do we do with this you know like like all of a sudden people are like oh go buy toys and i'm like no we need to like talk to her about saving and and she has this piggy bank and every time she finds money she saves it and we want to give part of that away and there's just like a whole bunch and and this really helped me like approach because it's not like he does talk about like investing in real estate and things like that but it wasn't so much like do this mm -hmm. like the the tony robbins book is all about index funds which are an amazing thing but uh, this is just very much of a mindset about um, running a business and having your money work for you versus uh, just getting a paycheck every single week and complaining about not making enough money. So I thought it was very, very interesting. Yeah. As someone who uh, who has had like uh, student loans forever and ever, I mean, Courtney has a, a PhD, so that was a lot of schooling. Just being able to budget and work on those loans is just like you really need uh, some good financial uh, like foundation to, to figure that stuff out. So yeah, I, I think any of these books that they just inspire you, uh, to look at things like that is just so incredibly important. 
Um, my sick pick today is going to be sort of a follow up to a sick pick that I did a while ago that a lot of people really, really seem to like. And the sick pick that uh, it was uh, overcooked for uh, and it's for the <laughs> computer for whatever. So my sick pick today was overcooked two, which is the sequel that came out a couple of weeks ago. I think I don't I'm, I forget. Either way, we have been playing the life out of this game. Uh, Courtney and I, we we played Overcooked one until we beat it, and then Overcooked two, uh, we were already uh, pretty good at Overcooked. So you know we're we're uh, we, you know we're getting better. But like this game kicks off, and you're making sushi, and you're making uh, all sorts of I don't know, just so fun. But they added some like really little like interesting abilities. Like it, it's so much fun because one of the abilities is they added to is to throw things which it doesn't seem like like in a kitchen you're, you're working you're a little cartoon guy you're moving stuff around you're cooking and uh th this game is so much fun because what you're doing the whole object is to to get the orders out as fast as they come so you're building and you're cooking things and you're working together with your your teammate to make these orders and in this second version of the game they allow you to throw things now so we're in these kitchens that have like a a, a chasm in the in the like the, there's a giant hole that you can fall fall into in the middle of the kitchen we're just chucking <laughs> chucking stuff at each other and i'm like i'm like here's some burgers 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 we're just tossing them and stuff like that and we're yelling at each other and uh but we it, it is actually really funny uh so many principles of things about like keeping cool under pressure like when when we're effective in beating the game corny and i are functioning like a real kitchen and we're like we're intense but we're very like calm at the same time we're like need burgers need burgers but like when we when when stuff's on fire and we're all like freaking out it, the whole thing just goes into a total mess and it's like an episode of some gordon ramsay tv show or something <laughs> like that but i absolutely love uh overcooked two and uh yeah the sequel mm, I, I love the first one and uh overcooked two definitely lives up to the hype um so that's my sick pick overcooked two play it wicked what about uh shameless plugs Shameless plugs. Hey, I have a course on React testing called React Testing for Beginners. I've gotten a ton of great feedback on it. Um, a lot of people have been very, very uh, excited with this course because it makes testing really easy. Now, you know, I, I never loved learning testing. I never loved testing that much myself uh, until I figured out like really nice practices. I, I read all of Kent C. Dodd's stuff and uh, his React testing library plus Jest has like totally transformed how I think about testing in React. So this course is aimed at anyone who's not like great at testing, maybe doesn't love testing, maybe doesn't know anything about testing at all. And we take you from the very beginnings all the way through your a, a pro in real world testing situations where you can do things like uh, testing APIs that come in and mocking data and understanding all the jargony stuff. So check it out, leveluptutorials.com forward slash store. And uh, you can buy React Testing for Beginners right now. It's on sale until the uh, next series is released. I sort of release them whenever they are finished. So uh, get on that because there's no, it's like only going to be on sale for like 20 more days. Or you can become a level up pro at leveluptutorials.com forward slash pro and sign up for the year, save 25% and get access to everything. Awesome. I'm going to plug my upcoming advanced React GraphQL course. I just, I'm about to finish the testing portion as well. And I talk about that. Um, I I took some time and added a couple extra videos on um, some beginner testing stuff just so that I'm not throwing people in and being like, oh, mocks and spies and uh, yeah. and test suites and, te you know, like, it, so I kind of like added a couple of videos that would explain the core ideas behind it. And then we get into testing and mocking the Apollo store and whatnot. So that's almost done. And then the last piece I have, which is going to be pretty quick, will be the uh, deployment. Uh, then I'm done. All the videos so far are, are edited up to it, uh, and I'm really excited. It will be at advancedreact.com probably in a couple weeks, or as I tell everyone, soon. Soon indeed. Uh, All right. Johnny, there, there's like the third garbage truck today coming down through the alley. I don't know <laughs> if you have alleys where you are, but in Denver here, we have a house and then an alley and then a, a garage and then a, another house. So like everyone's garage is in an alley. And yeah. so... It's like right outside my window right now, and she is going nuts. Lou. Oh, man. Lou, you're safe. The garbage truck is not coming in the house. <laughs> we, got, we, we typically right. record on a Monday, so we don't have a ton of dog barking, but this occasionally happens. So Monday is my garbage day, but uh, I'm on the third floor here. Nice.
So, um, all right, let's uh, let's take some questions uh, from the chat room. Go ahead and and ask them. I know. Somebody asked, "Are those stickers in the boxes behind you?" Yes, they are. Here, let me show you. This is one of nine boxes of stickers. Nice. I know you're safe. I know you're safe. You are safe. All right. Uh, I can't promise she's not going to be barking some more, but that's fine. Uh, this is this, this is casual chit chat in the, the with the chat room. Casual so just Wednesday. Grab, grab a couple questions here from Chase Webb. What do you do for email hosting for new projects? Pay for Google Apps for each one, or is there something more cost effective? Um, so what I do is I pay. Actually, I got Google Apps before you had to pay, so I don't pay for it, but I would. Me too. Um, and I have Google Apps set up for my my corporation, um, and then I just alias the domain name to all of my websites. So we have bosstype.com, which is my corporation. Um, and then I've got westboss.com and then my wife has kateboss.com and those are the only three we have. But if I, if I were to ever add additional domain names to it, um, I would just add like, let's say syntax, I would add syntax as an alias and then all of the emails at syntax.fm would start working, uh, for, for that domain name as well. Yeah, I do the same thing. I, I, I got yeah. G, I got Google apps or whatever when it came with the domain for free and I've just been holding on to it. So that's yeah, I would pay for it if I had to though. Awesome. Um someone says, is that Wes. a Zeit shirt? It is a Zeit shirt. Uh I got it when I was speaking at Zeit Day in oh, San Francisco. Sick. Yeah. They, but I think that's the only way you can get one. I'm not sure. Uh, you might want to reach out to them. I, I think they they were <laughs> I think this was like the conference uh, you know, door swag, door price, swag yeah. Couple of people have asked this so far. How did you end up choosing for tonight? We're strangers for the intro to the JavaScript 30 course. Are you normally into metal metalcore uh, slash DJ and DJ? I don't even. I looked that up. That term. I haven't heard that term before. DJ ENT. That's like it's like very technical. I don't know it. Um, yeah. Sort of hardcore. Uh, that was one of my favorite bands called The Divided. Uh, and they are no longer a band. But I messaged the singer. From it, and I was like, "Hey, can I like use the riff from that in my course?" And he's yeah. like, "Yeah, man, go for it." And it was it was crazy how many people like could earball it, just being like, "Oh, I know that song," just from like the six seconds. And also, I was amazed at how many people enjoy a little bit of hardcore. Yeah, and, well, that I mean that pairs nicely with the question above it, which is, "What type of music, song, soundtracks do you listen to while you're coding?" Uh, so we we know that you listen to a lot of uh emo core hardcore, hardcore. Yeah. yeah that sort of stuff uh, i listen to a lot of rap music um a lot of rap music uh from all various eras and genres um i actually have a level up tutorials rap music playlist that i can share here uh maybe i'll post it in the chat room but yeah that's that's what i listen to um dylan parker how much time do you spend outside of your standard hours working on other dev related stuff. Um, I wish I could spend more, uh, usually none. Uh, I usually just work nine to five just because my kids are so young and they require a lot of um, like as soon as it's five o'clock, I go and make them dinner and then we usually go to the park and then we give them a bath and then they put them in bed and then and then that's it. Um, but every now and then we get lucky. And my wife loves working as much as I do. So every now and then we'll get a like a free night. And uh, and what we'll do is we'll grab our laptops and start hacking away on something that is exciting. Because I just love those like evenings where you don't have to do anything, but you you have all of this time. It's very rare that right now, though. Yeah, I spend too much time outside of standard hours. But it's only, a lot of it's because we're like doing like swaps of time where like the only time I can work out is from 3.30 to 4.30. And so I'll work out from 3.30 to 4.30 and I'll stop working. But then I will pick up uh, work again after Landon's uh, in bed for like an hour or so. And it's not, it's just like, it's like a workaround. It's something that I do because uh, 
I, uh, you know, got to get that time in and whatever. Uh, I do, I do spend a lot of weekends working too. I have my own like platform with all this stuff that it just has, I don't know. I'm, I'm bad at not working. I need to get better <laughs> at it. That's really, I'm trying to make excuses for it. Hey Wes, uh, can you allow it so I can post links into the chat? It's, um, I don't know if you have to make uh, a mod or something. I don't know. It's not important. I can tweet out about it. What are you trying to, to link up? Oh, it's just Spotify playlist. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know how. Oh, oh, oh. No, I can eject you. Okay, well, don't eject me. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, I'll post, I'll tweet it out or something. You could, yeah, yeah. Or I can, you can send oh. it to me on Slack and I'll post it in for you. Yeah. Uh, Chris says, uh, you guys have mentioned skateboarding in the past. Did you grow up skateboarding with friends? Do you still skate when you can? I grew up skateboarding, rollerblading, all that stuff, uh, snowboarding, um, all that good stuff. And uh, we used to, we used to, there's a skate park that was built uh, where, I, where I'm from in Brighton, Michigan. There was a skate park built when I was in like fifth grade. And I used to just live at the skate park 24 7. And then they built like two more, like out of all places in Michigan, there'd be like five skate parks in the entirety of Michigan. And three of them were in my hometown for some reason. Uh, so that was like pretty sweet. Uh, I pretty much grew up and lived at the skate park uh, forever and ever. I was a fruit booter, says Dylan. Yeah, I was actually, I was a sponsored uh, fruit booter at one point, sponsored by Vans. I, I got to open up a skate park in uh, Novi, Michigan. But yeah, no, I, I, I spent a lot of time and now I just cruise. A super cruise. I've had a couple of uh, concussions, so uh, I don't I don't ride the ramps anymore. I just I, I have a largish deck and I just cruise around uh, Denver on this deck. Yeah, I was I was pretty into skating as well. I, I was more into like boxes and ledges and rails and like just like like a flatland stuff. Um, I was yeah. never like super good though. Like I I remember my like. I could ollie like three pop cans stacked on top of each other. And like, that was my huge thing or kick flip into a grind. But um, I only realized like halfway through or even more that I was riding Mongo, which is where you, oh, yeah. uh, you put your, you, you push with your back foot instead of your front foot. And then you flip. And like, I realized like that was a big problem for me because I had to like adjust my feet whenever I pushed and, and, and then stood on the board. So I've always thought about like picking it up again, but I also don't want to like I'm getting old. And if I fall, I don't want to break an arm or something like that. <laughs> you know? I, I have a, I have one of my old decks because I have like, uh, you know, my big decks and my my little decks. I have one of my old little decks and I, I just like I'll go out and try to throw kickflips like all day. And I'm so bad at it because it's been so long since I've been any decent at skateboarding. So I, I, I was <laughs> thinking about like I used to build um I used to build rails out of like PVC pipe, like drilled in like little, little tiny yeah. rails, like out of PVC pipe. I would love to just build another little PVC pipe rail and try to do some board slides on that thing. And then when Landon is old enough, teach him how to do it because that'd be, that'd be a lot, lot of fun. Yeah. I used to have a snow skate too. Do you ever have one of those? I, d I didn't. One of my best friends did that. We would take around in some hills and stuff. Yeah. We would, I worked, that was so much fun. I worked at the ski hill in uh, Brighton. So it was like, I could, uh, we could take that thing out after hours and stuff and mess around with oh, it. Just rip. I had a, a like a, a hill in my front yard growing up. So we would just put like a, like an old bed rail or something on like a, on a box. And then you could just like grind it. It was so much fun. Like that and uh, trampoline boarding was so much fun. Dude, trampoline boarding. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. I think we've talked about trampoline boarding. We have. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's one of my, <laughs> I, I, my trampoline, so my backyard is like decently sized right now. We, we somehow lucked into a lot that's like one and a half lots in, uh, in our neighborhood here. So it's larger than the normal lot. And we have a decent sized backyard for the city, but it's like uneven ground. And so my trampoline, uh, which I bought myself is just sitting disassembled in my backyard being like, please put me together. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out where I can put this. Like I, I could, I could actually put it together on the patio, but it would take up the entire patio. And I'm pretty sure Courtney would kill me if I took up the entire <laughs> patio with my trampoline. Uh, so we used to live in this neighborhood in, in uh, Dexter. 
and all the backyards were sort of back to back to back. And I would had my trampoline in the middle there and I would be out there jumping on my trampoline every day. Like this was like, this was like four years ago, not even three years ago. And I was just doing like, people would be out there on their decks eating dinner and I would just be on my trampoline and they'd be like, all right, that's the weird neighbor jumping on his trampoline again. <laughs> the, the family with no kids and a trampoline. That's hilarious. A couple of people asked, are we going to react conf? I'm not. I think I was invited, but um, I just I have so many conference invites and yeah. I have very little actual time to go to them. So I unfortunately can't make it to most conferences that I'm invited to. Yeah, we are going to uh, the Jamstack conf. Jamstack. Oh, is that bo- are they announced? Is that announced? Well, I I don't know how much is announced. I know that I'm on the site now, but I don't think they've oh, like awesome. tweeted about it. So uh, we are both on the site. So we are both going to be in the house uh, Ooh, at the Jamstack Conf. Jamstackconf.com. It's October 29th to 30th, uh, presented by our pals at Netlify. And uh, Scott and I both are, are going to be there. Hey, they put... For underneath your name, they said founder level up tutorials in Syntax FM. Yeah. And underneath mine, it just says founder Syntax FM. They well, they asked me what I wanted to put in there. And I was like, well, uh, I need one more thing than Wes. So uh, just put, <laughs> put in both of those. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I always, whenever I have to fill those out for your name tag, I always just put appearing as himself under <laughs> in it because I never know what to say. Like Wes Boss working for Wes Boss. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on. My dentist is calling. You keep going. Your dentist is calling. Okay, cool. Let's see if uh, uh, we have any questions here. Uh, yes. So this is going to be the first time that Wes and I actually meet in person. Uh, this is going to be is going to be kind of hilarious, considering uh, we've done now. This is the seventy fourth episode of Syntax, and we've never met in person. We've o- only met via camera, so it's going to be hilarious. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. The whole thing's going to be great. The Jamstack Conf is going to be great. I'm looking really, really forward to it. Um, I'm also going to be at I think um, I'm also going to be at a GraphQL conference as well. It is. Uh, let's see, GraphQL Summit, November 7th and 8th in San Francisco, also going to be there. Uh, somebody says server-side React, when and why? Uh, I use server-side React for my app because uh, page load times are nice. You get some uh, some good uh, SEO benefits, right? You don't have to worry about that pre-render stuff. It's a pain sometimes. It's a pain for me because I have code splitting. I have GraphQL data coming in. And uh, it's on Meteor platform, so nothing is like super duper easy. But I think the benefits of server side React kind of outweigh things. And sometimes you get those errors where it's like the container doesn't match, like expected a div and received a div, and you're like, okay, well, great, thank you. Um, but I found most of the time that the uh, server side React, especially uh, like Next.js, if you're using Next.js, that's super duper duper easy. So um, yeah, I would I would uh, I would say plus thumbs up for server side React if you can. Um, someone says high, high five, handshake, or hug. It's got to be a hug. What are you talking about? Yeah, I don't even yeah. think that's a question. I'm a hugger. Yeah, yeah, I, good. I'm glad. There, there, that settles it. <laughs> what other question? I feel like 98 West would bully 18 West or at least drop acid on his. Uh, it went a uh, 98. I was 10. I hope you're not doing acid when you're 10. <laughs> or sounds effort. like some permanent damage yeah don't do uh, acid um everyone's making fun of me for writing mongo thank you is there any other going on uh, coder cruise that what a coder cruise that sounds fun it's like looking for anything there's going to be like a, a coder did you see there's like a conference in uh antarctica or something now the next thing there's going to be like a coder get lost in the jungle where we just like put you into a jungle and then you have to use uh your computers to get out of the jungle or something that was actually i was invited to a conference in south africa and i'm um, part of the conference was that you go on a safari into the african uh not the jungle, but wherever the tigers are and stuff. But the conference got canceled because of some strange reasons. But I was looking forward to that. Maybe because of tigers. <laughs> Probably tigers. Because of the liability involved in tigers. <laughs> oh, somebody oh, said you may as well rollerblade. Rollerblading was cool. Don't come on. <laughs> Those are skate and it is ice skate emojis. Come on. Yeah, no. I like rollerblading. 
I, 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 uh, I won a lot of competitions rollerblading, so I have a very fond spot in my heart for fruit burgers. Very, very fond spot. <laughs> um, uh, Soul Skater, absolutely. Hey, somebody knows Brink. I use uh, I use clips from Brink and um, Airborne. If you've only seen Brink and you haven't seen Airborne, you are doing yourself a disservice. And if you've never seen either of them, you got to see them both. Actually, one time I made a music video for one of my songs that I recorded using only footage from the downhill race in Brink. And uh, it was actually only footage of when people were falling from the downhill race in Brink. But I love Brink. Uh, Soul Skaters, Team X Blades. I mean, you know, you got to you got to you got to keep the, the the Soul Skaters alive. Yes. Uh, Airborne is is the best. One time my uh, um, I entered a B-boy battle as B-boy Mitchell Goosen who's the main character for, for airborne. So I, I love that movie. I'm a huge fan. Mitchell Goosen is the man. All right. Last call for any questions that aren't related to skating. <laughs> yeah. Team pup and suds. Sean Larkin. I see you. Oh, yeah. celebrity you. in the house. I see you. I see you. Yeah. And you get with the notice me senpai. That clip is like one of the funniest things in the entire world. The notice me senpai, uh, that guy. I don't think I've seen that. Ooh, the satanic. It's like the satanic church. Google satanic church. Notice me, senpai. Watch it later when we're done. It's great. Uh, it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, Nigel Houston's recent video. Yeah, Nigel that was Houston. a sick pick of mine. Yeah, and the music along with that. That oh, it's so gnarly. The till death Nike skate video. Yeah, yeah. That uh, some people like. I don't, I don't understand like putting him down in any sort of way for being like a, you know, super sponsored. Cause that guy is net. He's been nuts. He's been nuts instead of he's been nuts. <laughs> and nuts. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got a question here. When are stickers going on sale uh, soon when they're finished being repacked? Uh, what else is here? How did you s decide to start a podcast together? Go back to the. It's a couple episodes. We talked about that. I think our origin story is is how we talked about it, and then in one of the potluck questions, we answered it as well. We yeah. uh, we did, we're in a uh, what's it called? What was that thing called? Mastermind group together. Yeah, yeah, and we had found out the inception of uh, syntax was like a year before we actually uh, made it. Yeah, and now we've been at it for over a year already. Uh, favorite hot sauce. My favorite hot sauce is Murph's. Uh, it's M E R F uh, electric lime. It's not super duper spicy, but it's electrically limey and it's the best thing in the entire world. Murph's M E R F's electric lime. Oh, yeah. I, I'm a big fan of Cholula lime. Um, I'm also a big fan of the, uh, what's the Trader Joe's in the States has like a, like a green jalapeno one. Oh, we got amazing. Yeah. We got yeah. yeah. And uh, and then I'm also a big fan of um, what's that like baby baby rays makes a a buffalo a buffalo wing sauce which is amazing and uh, I I can also can't get that in Canada so I often smuggle hot sauce across the border yeah nice oh shoot hey uh, <laughs> I I have to go I didn't oh. look at the time I have a two o'clock it is one fifty five all right <laughs> that's a that's good it. Time. It's a good time. Thanks so much for yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, if you like this, let us know. Tweet us at West Boss at Estelinski, and uh, maybe we'll do it again. It's kind of fun uh, yeah, being able to I, do this. I had a great time, and this was easy. In case anyone wants to know what a, uh, a recording an episode of Syntax, this was it. Uh, this is how we record all of our episodes. I think this one may have had less Adam Adam cut than normal. Yeah, uh, but we didn't practice this. This is just this. We were about to record and decided to throw it on. So uh, thank you to everyone for watching this. This is this is the uh, behind the scenes look uh, that you never get to see. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. All right, peace out. Peace.